Furman. It's when a cry of an animal pierces the air. When the silence of rivers are heard. And the vibrance of life itself is extinguished. We never thought history would repeat itself. On April the 7th, we arrived to Somalia. We went there with the intention of looking at how severe the situation actually is. To bring the untold story to the community. But we haven't seen the situation so that people can actually understand how large the problem actually is. There was a lot of mixed feelings. Wasn't sure if the situation was going to be the same as the images that we saw in 2011 with the famine that had happened and 250,000 people that lost their lives. And obviously, going there and seeing the situation was a lot more uh, severe or difficult than I had prepared for. Right away after we arrived, we could tell that the situation was extremely severe. Plantation in the entire region is dead. Large number of livestock for the people that used to have them have died. People are malnutritioned. People are dehydrated. People are traveling for days and days to get the basic necessities that we take for granted, such as water. And as we traveled out into the areas where people were actually far away from civilization, you could tell that there is no water to be found for miles and miles, and for some people, hundreds of kilometers. As we were visiting some of the IDP camps, we came across this very beautiful soul, Fatumo. And she shared her story with us. in Inabo, our teams took us to one of the watering sources for the community in that region. And we were excited to hear that there is some access to water before getting there. We arrived there to see water that's been collected, that's contaminated, that's covered in feces. There's animals that are standing around that are very, very injured, bleeding. That's also contaminating the water. And people are using that water for drinking. People are using that water for bathing. They're using it for their cooking. It was extreme shock. I mean, to see that this is the water that they're drinking, that I would not in a lifetime touch. Uh, it just hit home that, you know what, we have to do something about this.
while we see the severity on the ground and we see how desperate the situation is, there is hope for this community. We knew we wanted to get the aid to those who need it the most. And to do this, we put ourselves in contact with the National Drug Committee. They were able to identify for us some additional regions that we needed to provide support to. We had to start working. And this is where Islamic Relief was able to get on the ground and give resources and support to those regions that needed it the most. Thousands of people are benefiting from immediate food supplies that are being provided. Thousands of people are receiving water trucking that's coming to them on a daily basis. There are hundreds and hundreds of animals that are coming on a daily basis to the boreholes and drinking from these water sources. And all this is being done because generous donors from Islamic Relief globally are stepping forward to say we are going to make a difference. We're not going to just sit back and see this problem grow. And people are coming forward to provide hope, to bring smiles to the faces of these children, bringing them joy by providing them these immediate food, by providing them this immediate access to water. Every life deserves a chance. Every person deserves an opportunity. We need to give them access to the basic necessities and take this as our responsibility because we have been blessed with resources that sometimes we take for granted. We can make a difference. We can change their lives. All we have to do is act. So let's act today.